promulgated the 2010 constitution, uh, I was tasked with uh, the function of ensuring that uh, the initial legislation, critical legislation to, to facilitate and actualize devolution were put in place. Now, there is um, uh, the issue of when can the national government perhaps intervene. Um, and at that time, we looked at the question of 90 days uh, because what we intended to achieve, and I still it still stands, is that the constitution is very clear that there shall be the national government and there shall be county governments. And any intervention cannot be permanent. An intervention to do, to undertake some corrective measures must be limited, targeted, so that the rights of those people in that county can be restored and they have the ability to govern through their county uh, governments. That is why the intervention period uh, uh, was limited. Uh, the issue that uh, we, we, we have seen, uh, as in the case of the NMS, um, all I can say is that maybe we have to wait for the report of the Auditor General uh, at the end of the day uh, to bring out the details of uh, uh, how this particular intervention was run or conducted. But the initial findings that uh, may be in the public domain is that uh, the NMS itself uh, has left a debt of almost 16 billion to the county government of, uh, of uh, uh, Nairobi. And uh, the nature of how they went in is such that um, they may not have followed uh, proper procurement procedures uh, along the line, but without casting uh, any ill motive or on any particular thing, I think the report of the Auditor General would be very helpful for us to really uh, discern the experiences of NMS in Nairobi and also then be able to guide uh, the Parliament, guide uh, Kenyans and guide the county governments on any future interventions because this is a learning process. We have had devolution now for, for 10 years. Uh, uh, you, you may notice that even now there is no need, in my view, uh, to have a ministry of devolution because these are entities that are constitutionally provided for uh, and they should not be interfered with. Uh, by the national government, but there can be collaboration and there are mechanisms through the intergovernmental uh, relations uh, legislation that Parliament passed. There are ways that this can be done. Um, on the issue of um, uh, state uh, uh, corporations, um, there are many. I think we may be having almost 300 plus. Uh, state corporations. Uh, so that is a portfolio that seriously needs to be looked at very, very critically. And I know this, has, this is one of the functions that will fall directly within uh, uh, my purview. Um, and I can say that uh, we will build on, we'll pick up from the reports that are there. Uh, there was the famous report by the Abdel Kadir Committee. Uh, that is a report that has very useful suggestions on, on the way forward. But I'll also be saying that, um, and to also touch on uh, part of the legislation agenda, I will really want to request uh, Parliament to actually just reflect and realize that the privatization program uh, of our, in our country of some of these state corporations has actually stagnated. It has not been moving at all. And uh, I would be calling uh, on yourselves and other critical stakeholders that this is dialogue that we need to have so that uh, one of the urgent pieces of legislation 
to kind of accelerate uh, the process of reforming these this sectors or the parastatals, that that law be urgently be looked at uh, and proper consultations undertaken so that some changes can be made there to improve efficiency and to also disengage the government uh, from areas where losses uh, continue to be incurred um, and yet uh, that particular entity may not be necessary to continue holding on to as, as, as the government of the day because those are public resources. So these are critical areas. Uh, each of these institutions will have to be looked at from a sector viewpoint and uh, also from its individual viewpoint and it is important that professional advice uh, is really uh, brought to bear in reforming uh, the state uh, corporations. Uh, so I've talked of an example of that as one critical piece of legislation. There are legislations that uh, we will have to look at uh, if we are going to have a hustler fund. Uh, it is important that the legal framework uh, be determined uh, quickly. Uh, we have to look at what are the existing funds, are we duplicating, uh, and if you're duplicating, what are the implications? So all these, uh, as an example, would be again a critical piece of legislation to help in actualizing uh, this process of providing greater access uh, to, to credit uh, by, by uh, all Kenyans. Um, there, there are laws that will be necessary and I want to also appeal uh, laws that will help in dealing with wastage uh, and misuse of uh, resources. These are critical areas that we can review together. And my target is to have legislation that will, uh, to fast track legislation that will also unlock the economic potential um, of, of, uh, of the Kenyan people, whether in agriculture, whether in manufacturing, uh, whether in trading. So these are the areas that I think we need to look at so that we can have uh, in institutions or private sector that is generating jobs as rapidly as, as, as uh, is necessary. Um, I want to uh, state that in the issue of uh, di diplomacy, um, we as a nation uh, will have to look more and more to economic diplomacy. Um, and uh, Mr. Chairman, I can speak here while looking at somebody who has been uh, the head of our diplomatic uh, missions, I mean, uh, business in the country for some time. But economic diplomacy is going to be very critical. Uh, what are our interests? We must quickly see how we can benefit from areas like um, the African continental free trade uh, arrangements. Uh, we must look seriously at enhancing our presence and our footprint within the East African community region, whether you're bringing in the DRC, uh, South Sudan, and how we can network. We must also play a very significant role because for economic diplomacy to work, there must be peace uh, in this region. So uh, we must be more aggressive in dealing with the, the issues around Somalia. Uh, we'll have to be more aggressive in dealing with the issues even around South Sudan. Uh, and I can give an example, for instance, there's a road that the government of Kenya uh, uh, with its partners want to push all the way to Southern Sudan. But there is an issue right up there uh, between Kenya's border and, uh, and South Sudan that requires urgent political resolution because that road is supposed to link. Uh, so the funding is there, but the process cannot be completed or pushed further because there's still uh, some political issues to be dealt with. So these, uh, to me, 
are going to be very critical interventions that need to be done. The diaspora, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, we, the figures are in the public domain. The di Kenyan diaspora, for instance, brings in place into this country almost 480 billion Kenya shillings uh, annually. Uh, and the president has, in fact, uh, in designating uh, the issues around foreign affairs, has now brought the issue of the diaspora uh, to the limelight. Uh, because that has now become a very critical constituency uh, in, in the development uh, of, of uh, uh, our country. Um, we also have to take advantage of uh, things like the climate change programs um, and, and, and play a leading role in those areas. They also provide a platform for a lot of uh, uh, funding if we can work well within those circles. So in coordinating uh, matters around uh, uh, diplomacy, uh, I'll be putting a lot of focus there uh, while, also, uh, uh, while also saying that we need to also continue strengthening our relations with uh, our, our traditional partners uh, and make sure at all times the Kenyan interest is covered. We, we may even want to f work more aggressively. There's been an attempt about Kenyans who are suffering in some countries when they get jobs there. These are issues that will require very serious and more robust and high profile intervention to try and deal with that crisis uh, so that we can avoid seeing the things we see and we read about Kenyans undergoing very serious uh, problems in different parts of, of the globe. I just want to repeat uh, the issue around uh, Anglo leasing. I want to state that that matter was canvassed in court. It was dealt with. It is uh, behind us. Uh, and even the issues that uh, came up, uh, it was not too long ago uh, that uh, I read in the papers that uh, indeed even those who were facing trial on some of these issues were acquitted eventually. So it was dealt by the court. Um, and I want to state very critically uh, that uh, ministers or for that matter cabinet secretaries do not engage in procurement. Uh, you can talk about policy issues but there is a procurement law that must, must be adhered to all the time. Um, the halted projects or stalled projects, uh, this is a crisis. Uh, and hence, that very important committee of uh, PSAs and all the technical people. Because we need to have a clear audit of these projects it's clear that some may no longer be useful uh, to, to, to the country. Uh, and uh, th therefore, there's a very serious need for a detailed uh, approach and professional approach to looking at these things so that decisions can be made and appropriate interventions can be developed. Um, and, and this also brings to question the, the, the serious issue of pending bills in this country. Uh, because very many businessmen, uh, contractors in our counties, you know them. Some have been crippled because they have never been paid uh, for years. They are suffering. They have families. They have employees. Uh, they have loans in banks, but they've been crippled. So as 